know, I know this sounds terrible, but I want to say, yeah, it's vlogger issues, first world problems, whatever. But if you're ever curious if Smoking Reefer has ever done anything for anybody, this right here is my phone holder because I can't find it. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for enjoying my phone holder at the moment. Um, but yeah, in any case, you know, there's a couple of things I'll say now that I'm looking back at some of the video. Uh, I think I, there's definitely some parts where I played pretty poorly in Texas. I think the action was actually pretty good. Um, before in the video, I said that the action was not good in Potlumet, Omaha. I still think you can get better action elsewhere, but I will say that looking back, I think your biggest EV, if you're planning a trip to Texas, has to be double board bomb pots. I think you need to study double board bomb pots. If you're a Hold'em player, you need to play the Nolan and Hold'em with double board bomb pots. There are so many leaks and so many mistakes that players made in Texas on double board bomb pots when it wasn't a specific double board bomb pot game. I wanna be specific about that. The reason why I say that is because I went to Dallas and played double board bomb pots at Poker House in Dallas. Now, that was probably the worst double board bomb pot experience of my entire life. Not because I won or lost, I think I lost like 300 bucks, but the reason why it was so bad was because it was five card double board bomb pots, high only, and people wouldn't even bet the nuts on the flop. Sometimes they wouldn't even bet the nuts on the turn. Happened to be the worst action in the world. The only way five card double board bomb pots should be played if you're doing five cards uh, in a super tight game is if you're doing ultimate high, ultimate low. Otherwise, four card double board bomb pots is gonna generate a lot more action. So one big review I would give for all the poker players that play double board bomb pots, specifically at Poker House Dallas, which was a decent place to play, um, is eliminate five card double board bomb pots unless you do ultimate high, ultimate low. Um, but when it comes to like the lodge, when you're playing PLO or you're playing No Limit Hold'em, those players aren't used to putting in so much time, energy, and effort into double board bomb pots. I think if I was planning a trip to Texas, I think that's what I'd specialize in. That's what I would focus on. Now, it's also important if you decide to do that, not to force your action. So don't force yourself to play double board bomb pots. Don't start calling with mediocre hands. Uh, be patient. So that's my advice if you're going to Texas. So I do think the action was good. Uh, again, it, it's better in Detroit, but you know what? I think the double board bomb pot situation, I think is where you can be the most profitable. Now that covers that. This episode, I only cover three videos, but in those videos, I talk about leaks. What might be a possible leak in your game? Certain situations that you should be asking yourself. You're gonna see two hands where I play on the button. Um, they're very similar hands where I would not play them in any other position. So I guess you could say this is like a button principle video. And then you're gonna see a fun one with a double board bomb pot. And uh, yeah, and, and there's a little bit of uh, some B-roll footage from Wayne and I, if you are in the Texas area and you want some hiking, something to do, they have this great place called Sculpture uh, Rocks, I believe is what it's called. Um, so check that out. That's pretty cool. They also have a VR center. We talked about that. So that's pretty cool as well. But uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. We do have a meetup game coming right up. It's not an April Fool's joke, anybody. April 1st and April 2nd, Wayne and I are going to be in Chicago. We're being hosted by Chicago Charity Group, CCG. And I'm going to put all their link and information down here. And uh, so if you are in the Chicago area, we have a pre-made sign-up sheet. Go ahead and sign up for that. We're going to do one round of four-card PLO and then one round of five-card PLO high-low. Uh, we're going to do a $100 to a $500 buy-in and then 75% match the stack. So when the game first kicks off, uh, I think it's at 1 or noon on Saturday. Uh, when it first kicks off, the max buy-in will be 500 Probably within an hour and a half, you'll be able to buy in for my guess is a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks, um, just based on what previously happened or whatever. It'll be great. It'll be fun. Wayne and I uh, like to have a lot of fun and energy, so please join us if you're in the Chicago area. Please go ahead and uh, jump on that pre-sign up sheet. Other housekeeping issues, of course, we've got. Um, we're going to be on Dancing with Our Stars. 
I'm gonna put the QR code right here. If you would like to vote for my wife and I, it, all the money and proceeds goes to a charity uh, called Hospice or UP Health Home and Hospice to help with uh, people who are in the process of, of exiting this world. So if you do donate to the $10, one of the things my wife is doing, if you would like, is giving away a free $5,000 boudoir package. I don't talk about my wife and her business very much, but uh, she is a professional boudoir photography. I'll put her information down there as well so you guys can check it out. So, But hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I do appreciate all the comments, likes. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, definitely give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think, what you would do in these situations. And uh, again, I welcome all feedback, both positive and negative. I love all my viewers, whether you're trolls, whether you hate me. Uh, but thank you very much for tuning in. As always, everybody, enjoy and play smart and run like a god. My strategy has like always been like I try to eliminate the fluff. Yeah. Because that's always been... This is like really cool. Update from Austin. We're all done with our meetup games in the Austin Round Rock area. And so one of the things Wayne and I know very well is you have to take a day off when you play poker, right? So <laughs> we learned that the hard way in Vegas uh, a couple months ago. Yeah, otherwise you look like a zombie, you play like a zombie, your reads are off. But yeah, here we have Sculpture Falls and uh, we're just getting the uh, beginning of it. But um, he likes hiking, I like hiking. I might not look like I like hiking, but trust me, I do. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, uh, are you looking forward to tomorrow's game? Yeah, yeah, today was a cool day. We went to a virtual reality escape room, which uh, one, I had never done virtual reality. Uh, I'd done a couple of escape rooms, but that was a really cool experience. It's actually and one right next to the lodge. It's you guys should check it out. It's literally in the shopping center with the lodge, like three doors down to the right. But uh, yeah, now we're doing a cool hike and then um, yeah, getting ready to uh, hit the cash games tomorrow. All right, play smart everybody, run like a god. Let me know what you guys think about the music on looking at the four cards or five cards that I folded post-flop. In any case, getting on to this hand, we're going to the flop. We're five-way action for $15, so there's $75 in the pot. We have queen, four, six, nine. Not a very strong hand, but we are on the button, and if you guys do watch uh, any of my episodes where I was talking about different principles and how to be profitable in Parliament Omaha, you might recall I had a whole episode dedicated to the button called The Button Principle. So according to The Button Principle, you can play pretty much any four cards on the button. I was asked recently while I was in Dallas, at the hideaway by the way, which is an episode coming up, what was my favorite hand to start with, either in Big O and PLO? And my answer to the gentleman's question was The Button. He laughed and actually told me that a, a local card player recently passed away, and that was his favorite answer as well, was his absolute favorite hand was the button. In any case, in Parliament Omaha, the button is so important because you get last to act, and I've talked about that in a, all, a lot of different episodes, but in any case, we look down at a really bad hand, Queen 4, 6, 9. So for all the haters who are like, God, the professor's such a horrible player, look, I know this is a bad hand, we got it, but we're on the button, and... We're going to apply button principles. So when the flop comes king, queen, six, complete rainbow, we didn't flop a monster here. We flop bottom two pair. The first player checks. The second player checks. Keep in mind, we're five ways under the flop. The third player decides to bet $50. Now, when he bets $50, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Question one, what is he betting in stack size or percentage of the pot? So the pot was 75 bucks. He's betting about two-thirds pot size bet, which means he might have like... 
10 jack with the king. He could have king queen. He could have a set of kings here. He obviously could have a set of queens and sixes, but we're pretty much blocking that. But in any case, we have to assume he does have some kind of value in this hand. So we're not going to blow him off of it. Plus, we have bottom two pair. That's not a good hand to blow off. So we just elect a flat. When you're not quite sure what your opponent has, it's okay just to call. When you think you've nailed what your opponent has, it's important in those situations that you should raise. Now, the turn comes a queen. Hello. I mean, now we have a full house. Really, the only thing we're losing to now is pocket kings and king queen. Plus, it brought a heart out there. So when the gentleman bets $100... Again, we need to ask ourselves a few questions, and this is the advantage of the button. Why is he betting $100 into a $175 pot? So he's betting about 66% pot, give or take a little bit. What does 66% pot size bet on a paired board with two hearts represent? Now, I know I'm diving into this hand really, really in depth, but I want you guys to keep in mind when you're on the button, you have so much power. I see so many people fold the button so often. I just, I, it just drives me nuts, but in any case, so when he's betting $100 into $175 pot, what kind of hands is he doing that with? Certainly he could be doing it with pocket kings. I mean, obviously that's a hell of a value bet. He could now be doing it with a hand like ace, queen, 10, jack, or ace, queen, jack. Maybe he just had second pair with a gut shot and he was just being splashy. And now he's caught up and now he has three of a kind, not realizing that I have queens full. And he could also be doing this with a hand like pocket aces. He was the original raiser. He could have pocket aces with a heart draw uh, or something to that effect. So, But he also still could have kings full. And so in a situation like this, I'm going to elect just a flat so I get more information on the river and see if the river changes anything. Now, when the river comes out of four, this really doesn't change anything. Like if he had kings full before, he's beating me. And he now checks so now when he checks you really have to ask yourself what's worth you know 75 percent pot size bet 40 you know 66 percent pot size bet on the turn and then a check on the river when the river doesn't change anything i mean don't get me wrong the river does bring in hearts okay so now i have to decide okay i'm fairly certain that we have the best hand here with queens full like if he turns over pocket kings here uh, I would be absolutely shocked. So this is a situation, especially when you're playing low limit, pot limit Omaha, you can do a value bet here. And if you get checked raise, it's a fairly easy fold because in a one, two, five PLO, people do not check raise on the river on a bluff. Extremely rare. Will it happen? Will it happen one out of a thousand times? Sure. But the other 999 times they have the nuts. So in a situation like this, we have to elect what's a good value bet and what kind of hands am I targeting? So again, I know we're diving deep into this hand, but this is very important because this might be a leak in your game is not going for thin value here. So again, we have to decide how much can I bet and what kind of hands am I targeting? Okay, if we have pocket, if my opponent has pocket aces, we can target that. We can target ace king. We can target any type of hearts here. Obviously, all straight draws miss. So if we bet and he had a straight draw, he's just going to muck. So now we decide there's 375 in the pot. What's a please call me bet? But if you check raise me, it's easy to fold. I elect on a value of $150. I figure $150 is less than half the pot size. And it also represents, hey, maybe I had a straight draw and I missed. So I bet $150. The gentleman counts out his chips. You can see him there in the top right corner. He elects to call. I go ahead and turn over my hand. Queen's full of sixes. Of course, we're good. He mucks. We scoop. Now, I bring up all of these points in this one hand just to demonstrate to you two things. One of the biggest leaks in your game might be you're not going enough for thin value. You're either betting hands that are super nutted or folding hands pretty easily. You're either over folding or over betting. Two, the button is so important. The amount of power that I had in this hand is a hand I wouldn't play in any other position but the button, and I got maximum value out of it. Let me know what you guys think on a situation like this. If you agree or disagree, let me know what you think on my play. So here we go. Again, we look down at deuce, 10, six, jack with diamonds. Now, you can see right there, clearly, I'm on the button. Obviously, this is a hand I wouldn't play otherwise. Now, there's a $15 raise. We're going to go six ways to the pot, to the flop. And so there's going to be 95 bucks in the pot. But I'm not going to talk about the button principle because I already talked about that. And let's see what the flop is going to bring us because I think this is going to give you an example of how, even though you might be betting large, you might end up saving money in the long run. And I think this is also an example of what might be a leak in your game. Because if you're super tight or super nitty, how can you maximize and extract the most amount of value from your opponents? 
and I think this is one where somebody misses out. So let's find out what happens here. So you can see the flop, we pretty much nail a decent portion of it. I mean, the flop is Jack, Queen, Six, Complete Rainbow. So it checks around to me on the button. Now in a, in, a, in a particular situation like this, when you have bottom two pair, you have two choices you can make. You can either bomb the flop and be like, go away, do a go away bet, kind of like a push your opponents away, or you can do like a third to half pot size bet, which is more like, hey, come on in. The water's warm. You want to like pull them in. And I know those sound like horrible references because I'm a big O player and whatnot. But in all seriousness, it's a pretty good analogy to push your opponents away or pull them in. So in a situation like this, I decide, hey, you know what? The water's warm. I want to pull some people in. I'm going to elect on a bet of $30. Now, what's going to happen here, you can see the old man to my left. Uh, he whips out $30, and he is going to call. Now, there's a few things I have to tell you about this opponent. One, he has played maybe one, maybe two hands in the last hour. He plays about one hand per hour. He has a really low V-pip. They called him Old Man Jesus for some reason. So, lo and behold, when the turn comes a six, we have bottom full house, and Old Man Jesus decides to check to me. Now, keep in mind, this old man here has not played very many hands. His V-PIP, which stands for voluntarily put chips in play, happens to be incredibly low, and he doesn't raise very often before the flop. So it usually signifies somebody is going to have like pocket aces, pocket kings out of position, just flatting. He could have pocket queens. You know, he continued on the flop, so he could have pocket jacks, even though I am blocking pocket jacks. But in a, in a situation like this, you really have to decide what can I extract from my opponent if he's super tight? And what can I do to try avoiding the most amount of money if I am absolutely dominated here? Let's dive into that just for a second. Let's deal with the first option. What can I do to extract the most amount of money? Now, if he has aces or kings, I don't mind doing a full pot size bet because it's like, get away from the pot. If you put me on a draw on the flop, you're still going to put me on a draw. You're going to call, and then it's going to go check, check on the river. Because if you call a turn and you've played one hand an hour and the board's paired and I don't have the nut full house or quads, I'm not going to pay you off. On the flip side, if I bet full pot size bet and you do have like ace, ace with a dangling six, you're probably going to call, and then it's just going to go check, check because you're such, such a tight player. So the old man decides to check over to me, and then I decide, you know what, let's go with plan A. Plan A is in, gonna be in full force. I ask the dealer how much is in the pot, dealer's counting it out, dealer figures there's $155 in the pot, I put out $155. I do this because if he is super nutted and I bet like 75, he's still gonna give me a little string to hang myself on. If he does have queens full and I bet 75, he might flat and then no matter what the river comes, he'll end up betting pot and then I'll be stuck in a really situ sticky situation. Whereas I know he's tight and instead if I bet full pot size bet, plus he's seen me be a little splashy, he's more likely to check raise. And if he does, it pretty much signifies that he does have queens full or jacks full at work. If you're looking for a tell, a live tell on individuals, when they do something like this where they Hollywood and they stack $155 out and then they're just hesitant and then all of a sudden they jam, like all of a sudden they're like, fuck it, because they're trying to per pretend or act like, ah, I guess I'll just shove them all in. It's very Hollywood, and it's very good to get somebody who's been playing poker for less than a year to call. But when an old man does this and he's played one hand an hour, there's really only one thing you can do. Just get him in the muck as fast as possible, especially if you're on a time break, because in the long run, you're going to save money. I don't even hesitate. Bottom full house against a super net like this. Yep. Good hand, sir. You're going to win. Let me know what you guys think. Would you guys have folded here or would you guys have made the call and just seen what he had? I think I made the right decision. I don't think. I'm like, I would bet $750 I made the right decision there. So in good style Texas fashion, we're going to finish out this episode with a double board bum pot. And we look down at deuce three queen jack with the jack high hearts. And oh my God, look at this flop. It is so me in any case yeah this is just an entertainment piece here there are some strategical points that i'm going to point out here but yeah when you have queen jack deuce three with jack high hearts and the flop comes queen jack jack on one board and ace king four with all hearts you are so nutted you're not going anywhere so now the question is how do we extract the most amount of value out of this hand? If you're asking yourself, how do I get the most amount of value on double board bomb pots, and you just started watching 
my videos, you should really go back. I have several videos on double board bomb pots. One of the biggest things I stress is when you are super nutted, you do not have to bet pot. There are certainly some people who will make arguments to bet pot. But what happens if I bet pot here and then somebody else bets pot? No one else is going to come along. I am basically nutted on both boards. Yes, I do lose to the queen high hearts. Yes, somebody could have a set on the bottom of aces or kings or fours, and I could end up losing. But what am I really losing to on the top? Pocket queens? I'm even blocking pocket queens with a queen in my hand. So I bet 15 whole dollars. $15 into a $70 bomb pot. So some people see this as a sign of weakness. A lot of times when I do this, people end up potting back into me. And then if I'm in position, I just end up flatting. So if you're in Texas or if you're playing double board bomb pots at your home game or whatever the case may be, you want to know how to extract the most amount of value. Sometimes betting really small on the flop when you're super nutted helps. Now we go to a turn. Of course, the turn's not going to change anything. I mean, it does put a 10 on the top. And it does put another card on the bottom that is not a heart. But so, I mean, we're still not losing to anything on the top except pocket queens. And we're not losing anything on the bottom except the queen high hearts. Now, I will tell you, I'm going to do something very unusual and very unique here in just a second. You're going to see it in just a minute. But the person to my left happens to be Wayne Donkfish Poker. In the event that you don't know, Wayne and I travel a lot together. We do a lot of meetup games together. If you haven't subscribed to his uh, vlog yet, please do so. It's Donkfish Poker. Uh, he does a lot of PLO vlogging as well. And actually, he uh, is a great inspiration to me. But he's also a very tight player. So I know when he calls $15 on the flop, he has to have some of one of these two boards. He either has the queen high flush or he has a jack or jack 10 or jack queen in his hand. I know he's either super nutted or pretty darn close to being super nutted on this board. So after I get a few callers on the flop and we're four ways onto the turn, I do the unthinkable. You're going to see it in just a second. I check. Yep. I checked, folks, right there. You might have missed it. It was just the shadow of my finger, but I check. Part of the reason why I did that, it's so important to know your opponents and who you're playing with. Because I know Wayne so well, I checked, fully expecting him to bet here. Because I know if he did have the nuts, <clears throat> and we've probably played over 100 hours of double board bomb pots in the last six months together. So I know if he's calling on the flop... <clears throat> and nothing changes for his hand on the turn. He usually likes to bet and bomb it. Now, notice his bet size here. He only bet $60. What does that mean? He's literally value betting. <clears throat> oh, my God. Am I really up against pocket queens with the queen high hearts here? Is that really possible? I mean, it is possible. But good news for us, Wayne only has $145 behind. So, even if he does have pocket queens with the queen high hearts, which, by the way, I would never fold this hand here. Like, if he's got it, he's got it. Congratulations. You win. Good job for you. I'm just going to pay him off. But in this situation, I think he's likely to either have queen jack, jack 10, or queen high hearts. And so we get actually two players who call in between us. So we were going four ways to the turn, and those two players are still interested in the hand. Now... I'm just sitting here amazed that we have two other people in the hand when I am so nutted. So I just make it 200. I am actually value raising a bomb pot. Now, if you're new to double board bomb pots, it is not normal for somebody to check value raise on the turn. Like this really should send off <clears throat> alarm bells to everybody. People should really be putting me on quad jacks uh, or pocket queens or the queen high hearts with pocket queens. That's really what people should be putting me on. I mean, this hand is so nutted right here. If you are playing a double board bomb pot and somebody check raises as a value raise on the turn, your alarm bell should go off. Like, why wouldn't they just bomb it out? Because if you bomb it out, it usually signifies that you're super strong on one board, but weak on the other. So when I make it 200, good thing, like I said, Wayne has 205 total behind. He rips it all in. And the dealer is going to give him his blue back, and then she's going to stack his chips. Well, now it's getting back to the other two players, and I'm thinking, what could they possibly have that they're going to call with? I mean, in all seriousness, I'm really hoping somebody has Jack-10. I can see somebody calling with Jack-10. And here we go. We end up getting two players that are calling after all of this debacle. We're going to figure that out. But if you're asking yourself what one of your leaks may be, 
in Double Board Bomb Pod. If you find yourself calling a lot instead of pushing the action, you might be losing in Double Board Bomb Pots. There's a good percentage of the time that you are. It doesn't mean you have to push the action in Double Board Bomb Pots, but in a lot of situations you should. Fast forward to the river. Oh my god, there's a huge stack of red in front of me, and there's like 600 in black in front of that. I potted it on the river. And one gentleman folds, the other person goes in the tank for a while, and I'm like, please call me. This hand is so nutted. And he calls! I turn over Queen Jack with the Jack High Hearts. He ends up having Jack 10. So he basically coolered himself only being on one board. Now, he didn't have like 10 High Hearts or anything like that. He was literally just playing for the top board. So that might be another leak in your double board bomb pots. But yeah, Wayne ends up turning over pocket pair of kings with queen high hearts so we end up chopping the main play smart everybody run like a god